Hey guys, welcome to another new week and another new episode of FTJ. We have some exciting news for you guys. We have some updates on our favorite game PUBG, but more on that after our intro. So this is Amartya. I'm Anantan. And well, let's get started. But hey, before we do that, do remember to hit that bell icon to turn on notifications if you haven't yet. So let's roll with the news. So guys, uh, last week we told you uh, about the entire PUBG ban debacle and looks like the saga is continuing. So PUBG, as you guys might or might not know, is actually developed by a South Korean company. So they are the game developers, they are the one who holds the rights to it. Tencent, the Chinese company, they are just like kind of like the production uh, crew, they are the distributors of the game. Uh, so uh, they hold the rights to distribute the game in some Asian countries, including India. But uh, right this week, we have heard news that Tencent has now been kicked off. And instead, uh, the South Korean company PUBG, uh, they are now looking for other distributors here in India. Or if they don't find it, they might actually uh, take it upon themselves and, you know, handle it all from developing to distribution here in India by their own. So basically what this means is the main reason uh, PUBG was banned here in India was because, hey, Tencent is Chinese, right? So we don't have a beef with any South Koreans, yeah. not as of yet at least. And yeah, so that means we have some hope that PUBG might be coming back. And while we are talking this much about PUBG, uh, there's been a trailer about 4G, right? Yeah, it's actually a fake trailer. Like, uh, everybody thought it was the real 4G trailer, but on like close inspection, it's basically a ripoff from PUBG Season 8. Literally everything is like torn from the PUBG Season 8 trailer. Nice. So, so guys, uh, by the way, there's another little bit of news. Uh, apparently, it seems like 4G, when it launches, it won't actually have a Battle Royale mode. It's something that would be added into uh, later on, but at the start, 4G won't have a battle royale mode and so it, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look like a PUBG clone, like at least that's what we're hearing right yeah, now. Yeah. Let's see how it turns out. Yeah. Anyway, on to the new news. Android 11 is finally here and we have some new features here. So basically Android 11 just dropped in September 8th and the supported devices are Google Pixel 2, 2XL, Google Pixel 3. 3XL, 3A, 3A XL, and 4, 4A XL, of course. And other than that, there is actually a yeah. beta program. So a uh, number of devices, like uh, the new entry here is probably Realme. So Realme uh, through the X50 Pro, they can get a taste of Realme UI 2.0 and the Android 11 beta. Uh, along with that, there's Oppo, there's Xiaomi uh, phones, like Xiaomi phones like the Mi 10, Mi and 10 5G. Stuff, uh, stuff like that. And then there's also uh, uh, some Oppo phones that are getting the update. Some OnePlus phones as well, like the latest OnePlus flagships. As of features, we have uh, like inbuilt screen recording this time. Also, there is a new conversation tab in the notification side and they are ripping off the chat bubbles from Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Yeah. And different features as in, we also have a dedicated media control tab as in like if you have, if you own like a lot of smart devices, you can control it more easily. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you have any favorite feature from this release of Android 11? I think even if it's a ripped out feature from uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, the chat bubble seems like an exciting thing. Yeah, I mean, it gives more multitasking ability. Yeah. It's a nice feature, but like a lot of uh, custom UIs have already had it, right? Yeah. Like uh, Realme uh, had it, Oppo has it. Yeah. But if Android implements it natively, it would yeah. be much better, right? Yeah, that that's something I'm looking forward to. But personally, what I'm looking forward to most is actually how they develop software for folding phones. Yeah. Yeah, because like, remember uh, Marcus in his uh, recent video on the Surface Pro Duo? Yeah. It was a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> We actually have support for uh, like hinge displays and foldable displays. Yeah. So if so it comes in built into Android, I think it would be better. It would be much better. Yeah. Continuing on to the Android update saga, we have OxygenOS 11 beta and it hints 8K 960 FPS. 
Yeah, so guys, take this with a grain of salt because yeah. currently the maximum, the Spectra 480 ISP, that's the highest we have on the Snapdragon 865, that can handle 720p on a 960 FPS for an unlimited amount of time. So there's not support for, you know, uh, 1080p, 4K, so I don't know how uh, OnePlus is even thinking of uh, doing this. Like I'm guessing they are just shooting like 4K at a very high frame rate and interpolating it to 960 FPS. Probably. Like how they are doing it on the Realme X and phones like that. Like yeah. lower end phones that support 960 FPS. It's not basically, they are not shooting at 960 FPS, right? Yeah, but then uh, the problem would be, you know, you can either interpolate frames or you can upscale the resolution. Yeah. So even if they like do it at 4K 120 FPS and then get it to full, so I mean, they would first have to go 4K 960 FPS and then from there again, uh, just apply uh, pixel interpolation and then go to 8K 960 FPS. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I don't really... Like I'm guessing the 865 supports a maximum resolution of 8K at 30, 30 FPS. Yeah. So my question is how will uh, 30 FPS footage interpolated into 960 FPS look like? There is no way they're doing 8K to... You know, 8K30 to 8K960. Yeah. It's probably 4K 120. Yeah. First, uh, they're gonna... Interpolate like they're gonna interpolate frames and then they're gonna upscale it. Like the source code reveals that it has support support for like 8K 60 FPS, 8K 120 FPS, 8K 240 FPS, 8K 480 FPS, and finally 8K 960 FPS. Yeah. So uh, you are saying it's not gonna happen. I am basically saying the, this it's, is just you know engineers being engineers you know what, we can give you the option, let's do it. Doesn't yeah. matter if the end product turns out. So I don't think it will ever make it beyond, you know, the yeah. code stage. Yeah. Uh, so like, other than that, we also have actually news about the OnePlus Buds code. wireless, yeah. right? So, there's so the source code also like reveals mm -hmm. that, reveals the existence of a OnePlus Bud C, which uh, I think they are gonna launch it with the OnePlus 8T. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So uh, I think the Z makes it a budget, budget wireless. Yeah, probably yeah. like if they're following the same naming scheme, but then given how I personally at least did not like their truly wireless solution, I don't know if a budget version of it would be something that I'd like, but hey, we'll see. Yeah. BD Dub, um, do you like anything about the AT? Like, are you excited for it? Uh, I don't know to be honest. Like if it's priced slim similar to similarly to the OnePlus 8, then it's definitely exciting. Yeah, but then for me guys, the best thing about the 8T is its code name. It's code name Kebab. On to the next big news, and this comes from the console world. So guys, uh, there have been a lot of rumors about the new PS5 and the new Xboxes. They're coming really soon, probably uh, you know by the holiday season 2020. And what's more, Microsoft has actually gone ahead and revealed the pricing. And this was kind of like a surprise because we already knew there was a big Xbox Series X. That's the PC-like one with the venting on top, you know, the one that's supposedly uh, able to play 4K 120 FPS, supposedly, because, you know, we don't really know if anything can target that. But anyway, uh, so the Xbox Series X so that's the pricier model that comes in at 499 US dollars. Uh, and then the most surprising part is that we now have a Series S. So that's like a cut down, a slim down version of the Series X. It's not as powerful. Like the main difference is in the GPU, but we'll get into the technicalities a little yeah. bit. It is the, actually the smallest Xbox ever. Yeah. As per the company. Exactly. Yeah. And the best part about it is the price, $299, so $300. Basically, like, uh, it's the same region as a Nintendo Switch, right? Yeah. So that's pretty amazing pricing. And uh, what's more, the fact is uh, there are a few compromises, obviously, you know, the cut down price must com come with compromise. So the biggest compromise here is that instead of 4K, uh, Microsoft with the Series S is targeting 2K at 60 FPS. So that's still pretty good because yeah. you know most most of us are still playing at 1080p, 1080p right? Yeah. Yeah. So even an, if it can uh, go as far as 1080p, 120 FPS, that would be freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh, and at $300, the other thing, like the guys, the CPU is the same. The RAM, it's a little cut down. It doesn't have 16 gigs of RAM. It has 12 gigs, which is fine. It's not a big deal. 
especially you know ram is something that only comes into play uh, like you need a lot of ram when you're increasing the resolution because texture sizes become bigger but uh, at 1080p or even at 2k it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter the big thing here is it doesn't come with a disc okay yeah so there's no disc reader in here and so it's basically like the ps5 digital edition yeah it's like the digital edition but here i think is you know kind of like my biggest problem with this is like uh, like if you own a lot of xbox no games like and... my thing is the obviously this is aimed at people you know who uh, don't have the money to spend on the series x and those are the types of people who you would expect that they don't have a stellar internet connection. Yeah. So those are the people you would normally expect that you, they would, you know, go and buy a disc. Because if you have a great internet connection, why would you even go for a physical edition of a game? You'll just buy the digital edition anyway. So, I don't know, kind of counterintuitive if you ask me, right? Yeah. But the thing is, I think what Microsoft is trying to do here is like... Uh, they're trying to bring people into the Xbox ex ecosystem. Yeah. Like, if you own a PS5 and this is like 299 someone, like half of the population might consider yeah. buying it. Right? Yeah, you, you might consider buying it. And then there's another thing. It's actually quite slim, right? It, yeah. It's like almost 60% the volume of the Series X. Yeah. So that's great. Um, the look, I am not really sure about. I mean, eh. But then that's for all the new consoles. Yeah. Anyway, speaking about new consoles, guys, there's actually a leak about a new Switch that is coming soon. And uh, as you guys might know, the current Switch, uh, it only outputs to 1080p. 1080. So it, the next generation Switch, apparently it's targeting 4K. So that's amazing. Yeah. I wonder if there's uh, what it's going to be powered by. Like, is Nvidia going to make a new chip for it? And if it does can we please have it in a tablet android <laughs> tablet pretty that please is. nvidia yeah but uh, the challenge here is like fitting a powerful processor like this into a handheld right yeah, into like a, how do you cool the thing yeah like battery the, draw. the idea of switch is really intelligent but the yeah. thing is every like every hardware should be inside the tablet right? yeah so it's very hard to like pull it off i, I don't know how they are planning to cool it but still, it's a great idea and like I'm excited to see it. I'm really excited about it. Like, I really, really love the Switch. Uh, I mean, that's more because I love Pokemon <laughs> rather than, you know, the Switch form factor itself. But hey. uh, but for Pokemon, you really don't need 4K, right? And uh, doesn't hurt, right? I mean, doesn't hurt, right? Like, uh, we have played Zelda on our big 4K TV, like the View TV we have here at C4A Tech. And uh, even at 1080p, it's kind of choppy. Like, it's not, it, it's mostly fine because it's 1080p 30, but at times you can see it's not hitting the frame rates. There's There are a few frames dropped here and there. So, I, I don't know. I mean, more graphics, better fidelity games on Switch. Always, you know, great for me. Yeah. Next up, we have news from Apple and Apple is scheduling an event on September 15. Okay, let me rephrase myself. It's not an iPhone launch. It's actually like Apple is supposedly launching the Apple Watch Series 6 yeah. and a refresher of the popular iPad Air. Yeah. So the iPad Air, like the previous gen had like big bezels and like it was it, like an old device. Yeah, right? exactly. The design wasn't that, you know, uh, updated and apparently the new iPad here it's supposed to come again with slimmer bezels of course yeah. and along with that it actually is supposed to have some face ID so you know no more home button no more touch ID, touch ID. it's apparently moving to face ID so yeah, yeah let's see how that turns out yeah it's basically like a dial down version of the iPad Pro so in yeah. the same form factor as the iPad Air and basically slimmer bezels and all so I'm pretty excited for the series, Apple Series 6. Yeah, Apple Watch series especially 6 because they are apparently launching a, a low-end Apple Watch. But then guys, this is a low-end <laughs> Apple product. So it will turn out to be like the iPhone 5C, yeah. like the plastic iPhone. If, if you guys remember, tell us in the comments below. Like Apple launched a plastic iPhone yeah. 5C for the... Low, low price of only 35,000 rupees. Now, if you don't have a kidney for sale, so you cannot buy an Apple Watch for yourself, have no fear, Realme is out with another one of their watches. And no, this time, it's not going to be a band disguised as a watch. It's an actual watch. It's 
call the Realme Watch S Pro. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't really know when it would uh, be launched in India, if it would be launched in India, because right now it's just past the you know FCC filings. Yeah. As uh, of the leaks, like it will be launched with the Narzo 20 series. Yeah, it's supposed Bunchel to be launched. Pro, and like they are launching a lot of devices like with the mm -hmm. Buds Air Pro they are launching the smart bulbs, security cameras and speakers yeah. which I think only like the wearables and the earphones will come to India right? Probably we don't really know if uh, sh like Xiaomi Realme intends to expand their IoT market to India as well it would be nice if they did yeah. but hey coming back to the watch the big thing here is uh, from what we know of it thus far, it looks like it runs on uh, Android Wear. As oh, sorry, I keep calling it Android Wear, but it's actually now Wear OS. Yeah. And uh, there seems to be a level of customization on it, like a custom launcher, something like what we saw with the Oppo Watch. By the way, guys, if you haven't seen our video on the Oppo Watch yet, that's up on the main channel. Cut to it here. But. Coming back to the Realme Watch, uh, what we know thus far is that it has a OLED screen, a round OLED screen, one point, I think 1.49, 1.39, in, 1.39 inches in diameter, uh, 454 by 454 pixels. So yeah, should yeah, be pretty and nice. And it kind of weighs around 63.5 grams. And the thing that it weighs about like 63 grams is like it has a 450 mAh battery. I know this doesn't sound big, but for a smartwatch, it is a big battery. Yeah, yeah it's pretty big. It's pretty much out there. And especially since, you know, uh, with Wear OS, it does really suck a lot of battery. And so there is a main thing that we didn't like mention, which mm -hmm. will be obvious in the video, which is like it has a circular display. Now, if Realme is launching new phones, Redmi can't be far behind, right? And that's why in our next news, we have leaks of new phone launches from Redmi. It's after the 9 Prime, they're gonna go with the 9i and the 9a. Oh, sorry, the 9a is being taken by Poco, guys. Sorry, sorry. They're rebranding it to something else. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, what about the 9i? What do we know? Well, it's a budget phone, obviously, if the you know, name didn't already give it out. Uh, other than that, uh, we know that there's gonna be a 464 and a 6128 GB version. Uh, the 464 is apparently going to be priced around uh, 7999 and it's going to be a Flipkart exclusive. Other than that, well, uh, we know a bit from the teasers on Flipkart that it's going to be, you know, big on entertainment. So what we are expecting is uh, a big screen, probably with a dew drop notch because, hey, that's what Redmi has been going for. Uh, and other than that, uh, do we know any other concrete information, Anthan? Like, we don't have, we don't know much about the 9i as of like the yeah. storage variants and the price, but as of the 9c, we have a lot more leaks. Mm -hmm. As in, it will come with a 6.53 inch HD plus display and with a 20 to 9 aspect ratio. And the phone will sport a 5000 mAh battery. And the 9i actually will come with a 13 megapixel sensor. Like, okay. That's not like concrete information, but yeah, these are guys again, these are all leaks, but honestly, we are not really interested in the 9i and the 9a. I mean, I don't know. Guys, let us know in the comments. Are you really interested in all these phones that are you know, littering the under 10k market? Yeah. Are you really, do you really want to know about the Narzos and the nine eyes like we okay. desperately need a good phone in under 10k right everything is like average to mediocre yeah i best, mean yeah. we have the nine prime and we have the poco m2 and I'm, i guess that's it yeah it's fine next up we have a news that we are personally very excited about so you can now fully edit microsoft office files on android g Suite. so we are talking about google docs sheets and like most importantly probably ppt or pptx files that's uh, basically, you know, slideshows. Uh, that is really an annoying thing for me personally because uh, here at C4E Tech, we work on Google Docs, uh, not even the business edition, we just work on the, uh, you know, the personal edition, the uh, one that doesn't require a Google One account. So what it allows us to do is collaborate with a lot of people. We can share our scripts, we can have our editors and cameramen uh, give them what we call guidance, which is basically, you know, comment on what shots to fill. So it's a, it has a lot of uses for us. But uh, one of the main problems was the compatibility layer. So if let's say someone 
for some reason wrote a document in uh, doc like you know office. offline uh, using microsoft office tools we weren't able to be um, see it like yeah we could see it but there were like some compatibility issues formatting issues all that stuff so this is actually great news for me i personally love it yeah. and i hope uh, chromebooks will also be getting it really soon yeah next up we have leaked renders from the lg wing so lg wing is basically a dual screen smartphone from lg so you cannot call it a dual screen smartphone it's basically one and a half screen smartphone yeah so the main screen is a 6.8 inch screen uh, diagonally and it will swell up into like a it's like a horse it's like basically like a t right yeah so we have the bigger 6.8 inch screen and below that we have like a smaller 4 inch screen and i don't know what do you think of the form factor i don't really like, like I, it i think it's going to be it's going to take very hard convincing from the part of lg to like convince the customers to buy exactly. a phone with this form factor like if they pull it off then i'll commend them for it but it is pretty hard to pull off yeah and uh, from the renders i mean i'm very interested to see the mechanism of it you know how it actually becomes like the t shape yeah uh, because from the leaked renders that we have uh, and by the way guys these renders are from even blast so ev leaks very famous very reliable so in all probability this is how the phone is going to look and we have two colors of it uh, yeah. but coming back to what i was saying uh what we see here is triple camera set up to the back and it looks like a very normal phone from the back and to the front you have this weird t display so yeah that's what i'm going to call it i don't know what <laughs> lg is going to call it but yeah let's see let's wait for the wing it's uh, supposed to be launching uh, in september this year so fingers crossed Let's see how this foldable turns out. On to some more graphics card news and looks like the Ampere rumor mill keeps on churning out new cards. AMD is dead in the rubble or at least looks like that because you know guys what we thought was okay the 3070 it beat the 2080 Ti out but it was kind of pricey right? Uh, it was like uh, on the more expensive side of things uh, uh, but it was still uh, less expensive than the 2080 ti of course but still less expensive. it's an expensive card right yeah like it was uh, more in the range of the uh, upper mid range card right yeah. we didn't have something like a, a 2060 well seems like nvidia thought of that and there is a 3060 and it's rumored to be on the same g104 die uh, that the 3070 is based on obviously it will have lesser cuda cores it will be clocked lesser have lesser boost clocks have you know lower power limits and all that but what we are getting here is a, a ampere architecture 8 gigs of vram and a huge 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 bump up in ray tracing capabilities as well as uh, general you know all over graf uh, graphics capabilities so really really interesting once we know more about the 3060 once nvidia does you know release it we'll get back to you guys with the detailed specs but for now if you think the 3070 is stretching your wallet a little bit too much hold on Next up we have news from Huawei so Huawei's Harmony OS is coming to smartphones and when i say coming to smartphones it's not like immediately coming to smartphone so the beta version of the second uh, version uh, the second uh, SDK Harmony uh, OS uh, SDK version 2.0 that's coming out in this year right uh, yeah it, it like the beta version is already available for the developers yeah. but is it is actually for like uh, smart devices like what do you call it we can have it in TVs and yeah. smart displays in cars and stuff like that so basically iot devices not not uh, for smartphones but yeah, exactly. for smartphones they are releasing an sdk on december 2020 mm -hmm. but like the final version like you you will start seeing uh, harmony os on smartphones on late october 2021 Yeah so that's still a year away and guys even like very recently how many OS was only limited to phones uh, or devices rather which had uh, up to 128 MB of RAM so you know uh, none of our latest smartphones are going to even come anywhere near that so uh, basically what Huawei says is they they'll continue the development they are uh, soon to support uh, up to 4 oh. gigs of RAM so that's good news but honestly i don't know i mean uh 
seeing the position Android and iOS is in, do you think a competitor in the next couple of years can really, you know, uh, take that position away or at yeah. least even, you know, become a competitor? Yeah. Even though the Chinese government is behind them. Like, I personally thought that Fuchsia was going to replace Android. But yeah. Google confirmed that Fuchsia is never going to replace Android and it's for different applications. Exactly. But Harmony OS, I, it's like a... It's like it's a toddler at this point and supporting 4GB RAM is yeah. like a not a big deal at this point like Android and iOS have like developed to that point like 4GB RAM is absolutely nothing, nothing right yeah. like they're running on x64 based processors so the minimum for them is like 8 gigs of RAM so like not minimum but they can support way above 8 gigs of RAM so it's just I don't know guys I'm getting uh, smart like I'm getting Tizen vibes from this <laughs> yeah Anyway, that brings us to the end of this uh, week's episode for Technology. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do hit us up. Get, uh, you know, tell us in the comments what you liked. Of course, yes, as Anantan was saying, <laughs> give us a like, share the video, subscribe to FTJ, and turn on notifications if you haven't yet. This is Amorto. This is Anantan. Saying goodbye for the week. Have a good one, guys. Cheers. <laughs>